Welcome board members to an impromptu board meeting. Tonight we're going to do a bit of a meet the game meeting and a little bit of a announcement type meeting. So stay tuned for all the changes that are coming to the Boardroom Gamer channel. It's March 1st, 2020, and I figured why not go back 100 years to the first telling of the Arkham stories by H.P. Lovecraft. So I'm going to be diving into Arkham Horror the Card Game. It's not a new game by any means. There are plenty of expansions, plenty of mythos packs, as they're called, the, the monthly releases for this game. But I, I've been hearing that it's a great solo play experience, so I thought I would share that uh, solo play horror experience with all of you. With that being said, let's take a look at what's inside the box and just meet the components. I love the art for all this stuff. I mean, look, the guy with his, typically, you know, the guy with his gun, his fedora lady in the back with her shotgun and all the Cthulhu-esque tentacles, as it were. Oh, Lovecraft, what hath thou given us? All right, so for starters, we've got a Learn to Play manual. Um, this, so there's a Learn to Play and a Rules reference. The rule, the Learn to Play is just 15 pages long, has some iconography on the back, uh, talks about a few keywords, the phase of the turn, of the phases of the turns and um, how to spawn and what spawn does, what prey does, timing triggers, things like that. So that is just a brief learn to play rules reference here. That is quite a bit thicker. It's taller for one and it is 31 pages. So that's quite a bit larger. Oh, and a full index on the back as well. Not to mention a proof of purchase. Good to know. Campaign guide, Night of the Zealot, The Ghoul's Hunger. Friday, September 18th, 1925, Arkham, Massachusetts. It's the end of a long and abnormally hot summer. The first hints of autumn beckon, but a heavy heat persists, relentless. A silent, unspoken anger grips the town. Tempers are short, and in the last week alone, there have been numerous reports of town people coming to heated, violent blows with one another over simple misunderstandings. And now, a call from James Hankerson. He claims to have found a dismembered body in his barn. Blaming the weather would be too easy. There's something wrong with this town, and not a whole lot to this old s that, and not a whole lot this old soothsayer can do to stop the slide. My auguries indicate a small group of investigators will soon take note of these strange happenings and set forth to make things right. I'll be watching their progress, but I won't be holding my breath. I don't know who's going to be watching nor holding their breath and who's doing the augury ring, but I know that I will be playing one of the investigators as we do solo play Mondays throughout the month of March and probably through the month of April on all the different mysteries through the Arkham Horror, the card game. What I'm hoping to do is make it an interactive experience with you, the audience, where you can help me kind of determine what actions I should or maybe shouldn't take. Um, maybe you're experienced with this game. Maybe you've never played the game but have heard lots of things about it, either good or bad, and want to figure it out for yourself without spending the time or the money to invest. I'm hoping to solve some of that for you guys as well. So that's the campaign guide, Night of the Zealot. It talks about how to set up for the campaign, expanded campaign rules. It says do not read, so I will not read that. Uh, don't read this, and don't read any of this. So basically I'm not allowed to read any of this book, but I'm gonna take a look at the back. Night of the Zealot. So it shows investigators who the player was, which investigator you picked, your experience tracker, any trauma, physical or mental, earned story assets and weaknesses, and then kind of a scenario tracker it looks like here. We go from the gathering, to the Midnight Masks through the Devourer Below, and any killed and insane investigators. So that'll be exciting to try to save the lives of all the investigators. Um, I believe I'll just be playing one investigator since it's going to be Solo Play Monday, and a place to keep campaign notes, uh, cultists that we interrogated and cultists who got away. Though it sounds like it's gonna be pretty involved, which I'm okay with that, it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Of course, the Fantasy Flight Games catalog, Key Forge, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, some Legend of Five Rings stuff, some Star Wars stuff, some Legend of Five Rings stuff, Fallout, Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Arkham, oh, their Genesis role-playing system, Descent still going. I don't know if they're still making stuff for Descent, the dungeon board game, but anyhow, pretty thick catalog. Some pieces. We've got some cardboard, cardboard tokens to punch out here. I'll punch those out in a minute. And of course, what would a card game be without cards? So we've got one, two stacks of cards. We'll go through those. And these are the investigators. 
So let's start by taking a look at some of the investigators. I don't have any names on these, but what I do see is there's a color photo and a black and white photo. So that's kind of interesting. Color photo, black and white photo. Got the uh, typical gumshoe sleuth in the fedora and trench coat. Guy in the brown tweed suit with the red and yellow striped tie that's sitting at the poker table, looks like. And old Miss Red Hair with the amulet about her neck. So we don't know anything about those guys, but I'm sure we will here shortly. All right, some of the cards. It's a hefty pack of cards, that's for sure. So we've got Roland Banks, the Fed, Daisy Walker, the librarian, carrying her trusted book. Ah, Skids O'Toole, he's the ex-con, that's why he's playing a game of cards. Agnes Baker, the waitress. Ah, Wendy Adams, the urchin, that's who's clinging onto that, that amulet. Oh, okay, I probably won't go through these cards now that I see this. The Gathering, that was the name of the first scenario, so I think we're just going to leave this pack of cards alone because I don't know what I'd be getting myself into if I started to reveal all of these cards. I didn't think about that, but I'm glad I'm talking it out loud now because it kind of tells us, don't go digging into the cards where you shouldn't ought to be. I did get the, at least I got the investigator cards though. These cards, now I know I'm okay to look at these cards because the first one says Roland's Special 38. I think these are the investigator's deck cards, but I'll go kind of slow to make sure I don't mess anything up. His weakness is cover up, um, his special, 38 special. Daisy's tote bag is her special item with uh, weakness is the Necronomicon. On the lamb, tactic. This guy's weakness is hospital deaths. I love that they have weaknesses, that's kind of interesting. Uh, an heirloom of Hyperborea, Agnes Baker only. Uh, memory is, or her weakness is dark memory. Um, I don't know if it's her weakness. I, I, I wonder if, like, anybody can have any weakness. Who knows? Ah, Wendy's amulet. Wendy Adams deck only. It's, and it's actually her amulet, the one she's clutching in the picture. That's kind of cool. And this looks like Wendy. Um, abandoned and alone is her weakness. And then it looks like some, well, not generic cards. They have this little police symbol in the upper right-hand corner, so I don't know if that's for the the Fed's deck, or if anybody can have them in their deck. I, I don't know the deck building rules yet. I will be going over those in Solo Play Monday. Um, here's one with a little uh, globe. Maybe that's for the librarian. And then got some here green cards with a very interesting little runic symbol here up in the upper right hand corner. Burglary, pickpocketing, a derringer, hard knocks. You guys throwing back a bottle of booze. Here's a very mystic looking symbol in this particular card. Forbidden knowledge, scrying, yeah, this is very mystic. Arcane initiate, drawn to the flame, ward of protection, fearless. This red set has like a falcon of some sort in the upper right hand corner, leather coat, scavenging, baseball bat, stray cat, dig deep. Look what I found, survival instincts, and lucky. Now these cards, well, they say asset. I think there were some that others said asset as well. Knife. These look like generic. Yeah, these are just four copies of, of the same card. Knives, emergency, cash, guts, perception, overpower. Art's kind of cool. It's very time period specific for the 20s, 30s. Bulletproof vest. You don't go walking around investigating crimes in the 20s and 30s without a bulletproof vest. Elder sign amulet. And then some more weaknesses, amnesia, paranoia, hunted, hypochondria. And some basic weaknesses, and then Lita Chandler, the zealot. So I think that, well, that's it for the, the cards. Let's take a look at some of these tokens. Well, the cards that we're allowed to look at, I should say. Take a look at some of these tokens and see what we've got in the, in the pack there. Got some hearts, got some brains. Now, if you've played any, Arkham games, Arkham Horror, Eldritch Horror, um, what was the other one where you had Eldritch Horror, Arkham Horror, Arkham, there's another one. Anyhow, they all have these brain and, and heart tokens because they, sig uh, they symbolize health and sanity in this game. So that's how you can tell whether or not you're 
going to go insane or uh, die from damage. And it looks like there's some Elder Sign tokens here as well. If I can get this plastic wrap, I will be winning. All right, so there's some threes and ones here. Punch some of these out. Yeah, they're coming out all right. And there's some, like, looks like a crate of some sort that comes with the game. Won't punch all those out. And then this big pack of tokens has a lot more crates here. Then it has these big, like, big minus ones, minus two, plus nothing. Minus one, minus one. Oh, here's some plus ones here. Looks like an elder sign there. Tentacles, skulls, tombstones. Ominous looking guy here, another skull, broken tombstones. I don't know what all those are about, but good news is they seem to pop out nicely and with little to no hangers. Hangers, of course, you know are my pet peeve where you punch out a piece and it gets a little piece of the of the paper stuck on it, which makes it hang up and then rip and it tears the picture off the piece. It's a sad story when that happens. So that is, that's what comes in the base set of Arkham Horror, uh, the living card game by Fantasy Flight Games. I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on with the channel. On Mondays, what I'm hoping to do with this particular game is to really get into character, really get into the period. And it looks like, let me see what, which one of these people, either Skids O'Toole or Roland Banks was uh, one, of the one, one of the two I had in mind. Um, just to really have some fun with it. You know, a lot of, like I said, I see a lot of people that, that play this game, that absolutely love this game. And I thought, well, why not you know, share that fun with, with all of you, the audience. So that's what I'm looking to do. I'm looking for some input from you guys. If you have any suggestions or ideas about the direction for this game, or again, if you want to play along and offer suggestions or ideas of what we do on a turn, that's most welcome also. So I hope you enjoyed this unboxing meet the game meeting from Boardroom Gamer. We will see you guys tomorrow on Solo Play Monday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that is 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until then, we'll see you at the next boardroom meeting. Bye, everyone.